just out here with uh, Hudson working on our walking behind. This is something that he struggles with, but it's very, very important for him to get the hang of. When we walk our dogs, we always want them to be behind us as it puts us into, it puts us into a position of leadership, both physically and mentally for your dog. When your dog's at a head, um, you'll oftentimes see dogs that are out walking ahead of their owners, usually at the end of the leash. They're very anxious, very hyper aware, very fixated on the environment and paying very, very little attention to their owners, if not none at all. And Hudson was one of those dogs and he, he still does have those issues, but he's doing much better. Normally when walking him, if he hears people, if he sees a, a, you know, sees a dog, hears a dog, even loud noises, he would normally rush ahead and become hyper aware. He would already normally be ahead on the walk with his owners. Um, on the end of the leash, very, very tight with a prong collar. And uh, again, that's the wrong state of mind. It's the wrong headspace. The dog's way out in front of you. The dog is the one making the decisions. And that's gonna leave a dog in an anxious state of mind because they're not capable. Shh. 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 Of making those decisions without overreacting. Even there, right? He got a little bit startled. I think maybe the leash startled in there. I'm not sure. But he rushed ahead of me as quickly as he could. And we're correcting that and keeping him in this calm state of mind. Because now we can go through this environment here where there are distractions that he would normally be very, very engaged with, very, very aware of and, and fearful of, and he can just walk right past them. But we have to keep that state of mind in check. Again, normally he would become quite reactive to that stuff at least very hyper aware, maybe not barking or lunging, but most likely, um, but very, very hyper aware of that stuff. And we're really keeping that in check, keeping him on that left side. Anytime he steps ahead, gets too energetic, I turn my body towards him. I give him my command, which is calm on command for us. And I tap my e-collar pressure to add some physical pressure to that. Nope. And again, just keeping him behind us. It's all about that state of mind. It's not even so much about the position. I don't care if he stays, you know, three feet behind me or 10 feet behind me. I guess six feet, that's as far as you can go here. But I don't care if he does that, but it's the state of mind I'm watching. It's that energy level, is that increasing, right? When he gets worked up, you can see he picks up his pace. That's what I'm correcting. I'm not really correcting the distance behind me. I'm correcting the energy level. Anytime that energy level gets picked up, the distance closes. Now he's getting nervous because we've got people behind us, so that's okay. He can manage. Good job. Again, normally he would be pulling like crazy at the end of the leash, either trying to move, move towards those things or away, or away from them. Yeah. Can we turn our level down a bit there? And we're walking towards some distractions here. Nice big wide turn and he stays behind me the whole time. That's what we're looking for. A few corrections there, a few big corrections there, hey? And that's what you gotta do. You have to have that, that conversation with your dog to let them know clearly what, what the mistake is that they're making, right? That's where we give that e-collar correction in there, right? A little bit of physical, a little bit of social pressure, I should say, by turning and using our body um, to move him out of the way. So you watch. See, that's just a turn. That's just me turning towards him and saying, Shh. there's no correction there on the e-collar. But adding that correction in there definitely does back that up, especially if the dog keeps pushing that boundary. So anyway, this is the walk behind. This is why we do it. And this is a little bit about how we do it, especially with a dog like Hudson. Incredibly important. But for any dog, really, any dog should be walking behind you. And you get a dog to walk behind you and man, they'll, they'll you, you'll have them under your thumb for for the rest of their life, basically. It's it's pretty remarkable, so, yeah.